Hi you guys, welcome back to the program. My name is Brad. This is the Firefighters Financial Toolbox. Here on the channel we talk about investing, retirement, tax, and all things financial. Trying to make ourselves all financially free eventually. Today we're going to look at Fidelity's online retirement planner software. If you're a member of Fidelity, you can log on no problem if you have a plan with them. Uh, if you don't, you can do it with a guest access. So we're going to go, I have made a guest access. So I'm going to sign in this way and it logs us in with our guest access. Now you do have to put your name, email, a couple of those things. Whatnot. So we're going to start from the very beginning here. So it asks, let's start with some simple questions about you. Okay. I am a male and I'm still working. And yes, I'd like to include a partner. So we're using fake names. We're going to say we have Bill and Sarah. Smith and Sarah's birthday. Let's say Sarah is 1971 and she's still working and partner's female. Sorry, I forgot to add that. Okay. All right. So what hope, age do you hope to retire? So Bill, let's say Bill is going to try, try to retire at 65 and Sarah, being a couple years younger than him, is going to retire at 63. They want to buy or retire together. Uh, Bill expects he'll live till 90. And Sarah thinks she'll live till 90 as well. Let's give her a couple. 92 years. All right. Nice thing is you can adjust this, you guys. It's a Monte Carlo simulator. All right. So let's say that Bill makes $75,000. And Sarah makes $50,000. All right. And how would you estimate your retirement expenses? Normal lifestyle, estimated dollars or detailed expenses. Let's say that we have an average lifestyle. Okay. View analysis. So all we have so far is a projection with nothing in it. So let's go into a little bit. Let's go into the next thing. Let's go to retirement expenses. Now let's say that we estimate right now we're making uh, $125,000. Let's say we think we can live on $75,000. So if we do that, divide, let's see, I'll bring up the calculator here. So if we have 75,000, we divide that by 12 months, that gives us about $6,200. So let's use that. 6,000 of that is essential, oops, and let's call $250 discretionary. Have you budgeted for this? Uh, we're going to need some supplemental health insurance. Okay, let's try that. So it looks like we're going to need about $62.50 a month. Okay. What about taxes? Mary Fine jointly, let's say we're going to retire to Arizona because we want some sun. So it looks like we're about 14% there. Okay. Now let's go into our accounts and contributions. So we haven't got any things added. So let's say that we have a 401k. And she has 200000 saved. This is Sarah's. That's her Fidelity account. All right, now these are all fictitious numbers, you guys, but you get the idea. So let's say that she is maxing it out right now. And she's not 50, so she's putting in 19500 And her employer matches, let's say, 2500 a year. Okay, and she is not super aggressive, but more aggressive. So let's say about 80-20. Let's go there. Okay. This is doesn't give you exact what you want, you guys, but it gives you a good idea. All right, let's go ahead and, oh, we need to add another one. Bill has 250000 and that's in a 457, which is more or less the same thing. He's contributing the max, which is 26000 this year. Oops. Uh, employers don't match into four five sevens, and he is also in a fairly aggressive account. 
And let's say that because they're smart investors, they each have a Roth. Roth one. And we'll say that's Bill. Let's say Bill has uh, 25,000 in a Roth. And he's been contributing the max, which is 7,000. And he's got that in really aggressive stuff. And last but not least, we'll say that Roth 2, which is Sarah's. And Sarah has 20,000 in hers. And she's putting in 6,000, which is the max, because she's smart. And she's got that very aggressive. So we'll add that account. Okay, so we've got a 401k, a workplace plan for each of them, as well as a Roth for each of them. So let's update our analysis. Let's look at our projections. And the nice thing is this kind of updates as we go, you guys. It takes a second. So it says we're, we're on target so far. You may have 83.44 a month. You may need this much. So you could actually have a surplus with where we're at. Well, that's good to see. So let's look at the asset mix now. So right now, we have almost a $500,000 portfolio, you guys. We got about 51% in domestic stocks, 22% in foreign stocks, 23% in bonds, and about $5 in cash. Let's look at Social Security. So, should we include Bill's Social Security? Yes. Is he already complaining? No. He's going to start taking at 67. So, they estimate his income will be about 2083 a month. Sarah is going to have a smaller amount, you guys, even if she waits. So let's say because she's younger, she's going to take it two years early at 65. So let's update that benefit. Now you saw that went down from 1625 to 1408. But because she is the smaller, if either one of them is going to actually take it earlier. Now because we have a, a surplus, let's try this. Let's say it's keep Bill from taking until 70. And you see his went up about eh, about $300 a month there. Hers went down, but let's update the analysis now and see what it says. 136, so we're still looking at a possible potential surplus, you guys. Now this is monthly dollars and annual dollars. Now if you had any other income like you guys, if you had a pension, you could add that other income sources here. So let's say that he had, he had an old lump sum pension, and that was worth, uh, let's say, $35,000. He can receive that at age 67. So the estimated payment will be $35,000, I'm assuming, lump sum. So that would play into his thing. But what if Sarah, if we went over here and we added an income source, let's say that Sarah has a rental property, recurring income source. And let's say it's a rental. And let's say they get, a, after they pay their mortgage for that, they make, uh, let's say their mortgage is 1300 and they get 1600 So they're taking home 300 a month. It's already started. And they don't expect that to end. They expect to keep that. All right, so let's say we've got that added in. So what does that make us do for our, projections 143 you guys we are all the way pegging the green show me hypothetical detailed income and in this market let's say below average so it looks like they still think we could be okay you guys that we actually may have up to four million dollars at the end of the plan Withdrawals from, and it shows a breakdown of income that they're getting coming in. Uh, it looks like the other income is the green, so that would be their rental income. And then the blue here makes up the bulk of their withdrawing from their retirement assets. So what if we decided our asset max and we wanted to go, let's say we wanted to go a little bit more conservative. Let's update that and see what it does to change our score. Now we're about 50-50 on this one now, so it still shows us on target. But you notice that the amount of assets at the end of the plan have significantly gone down. You guys, if this was an average market, it looks like we would still be. And if we had 
Okay, so I see the first one is the negative. So the first one is significantly below an average return in the market, which when you're in retirement, you guys, you really got to think, hey, we might not get as good as we want. Uh, so that's something you got to think about for sure. Uh, but you can see here it starts our retirement at 2036 and it continues till Bill dies at 2059 and Sarah dies at 2063. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can change this, right? What if we wanted to change our time horizon? Let's say Bill wanted to retire early. He wanted to retire at 60, and Sarah, being two years behind, was going to retire at 58. Now let's update that and see if they could still make this work. So now they're on target, but you see it's a lot less of a thing. So now I would probably go back down because they're starting earlier. Okay, I'm sorry, it did go back to the aggressive, more aggressive asset mix. But let's see what happens now if we were to update this to that 50-50 that we talked about. Let's update the analysis now. You see the assets into play. That's pretty close to being out of money, you guys. That's pretty darn dangerous. I think I would definitely want to stay maybe a little bit more. Ah, 60-40, I guess they're calling that. 60-40, which is a pretty common uh, thing. You see, that still gets pretty with significantly below. If we had average returns, they're going to be okay. But if they had below or significantly below average returns, that could definitely derail their uh, retirement plan. So the nice thing about this, you guys, is that you can really take and put your own numbers in uh, I've used fictitious numbers on this, right? I've used fictitious names and numbers. Uh, I just created a guest account with an email that I have and was able to log in. Now, if you have a Fidelity account, it's that much easier. It remembers all that stuff, right? Uh, the more accounts you have, obviously, the more time it takes to add all this stuff in. But it's a good way to think about retirement to see with if where you're at if you're going to be able to retire on time when you want to, or if you need to significantly start saving more money, or if you're going to have to work a little bit longer. I certainly don't think it's the end-all be-all of retirement calculators, but it, it does give you a pretty good amount of different uh, data points that you can enter to really make a good uh, a good guess at what you're at. So anyway, it's a free calculator online. Uh, that I found and I really kind of like that I would put a little video together and show some document you guys if you got something out of this video do me a favor drop me a like uh, if you're not already subscribed subscribe to the channel it really helps me out we're over 700 now we're growing and I want to keep it going as I said I make videos about once a week on finances retirement investing and taxes so if any of those are things that you are interested in, subscribe to the channel and you'll find out about all of it.